Got a 2003 uh, bad trip in here. It's complaining of a brake leak. Got a little fluid loss here. Wheel cylinder just about bent on it. So I guess I'm going to show you how to do a wheel cylinder or a brake job or something. It's definitely out of adjustment. Should come off real nice. It's nice and lubricated. Right, right. Wreck some brake hardware. Buy new. Let's try to yank this stuff apart. It's a Ford. Bigger hammer, bigger screwdriver, bigger pry bars. It's the cure for everything. Maybe a torch. Maybe I gotta break something just to fix it. Happy. Wow. Yeah. Nice crap. So yeah, when servicing drums on a Ford or anything else for that matter, um, don't be afraid to wreck stuff. Ooh, that one came off. Ooh. I'm gonna check this one, make sure it's working. Pull this boot off, make sure it's not dribbling. It's dry. Alright, I'm gonna do one wheel cylinder, hardware kit, brake shoes, clean up these crappy old crusty drums. Quite yucky. Quite yucky. Might want some rubber gloves for something like this. It's disgusting. Um, the tools you might see me using are an 8mm, 13mm, wheel cylinders, uh, needle nose vice grip, this jobby here for taking off springs, this jobby spring thing, C vice, C clamp, grinder, safety glasses, dust mask, possible side cutters. Possibly. I'm gonna get a vice grip on this. Or I mean a side cutters on this. Try to get this off of here. This thing should come off too. Okay, I'm gonna pretend like I've done this before. These little three dollar jobbies are nice. You just push in, turn. Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. Take that adjuster out. <laughs> this thing won't even move. It's all rusted together. It's junk. I'm gonna get a torch after it. I'll loosen it up. I can always make those work. Okay, I guess I'm gonna need a screwdriver too. I'm just gonna get under here and uh, pull these out of the little hanger thingies. There. There, get that spring out of there. All right, now for this, I'm gonna try not to try not to get this cable off. This cable's got to stay on here, so don't pry on it too much because it'll come off, and then you get to put it back on, and sometimes they're not fun. I gotta get this clip off of here 
for the emergency brake. That probably doesn't work. Mm. There's a number of ways you can get these off. Sometimes you can get lucky and you can just take a pair of pliers and push it out like that. There. As you can see, I got a nice organized mess on the floor down there, so I can kind of kind of put it back the way I took everything off. This is disgusting. Um, brake fluid is hygroscopic with a G. Um, a lot of people use brake cleaner and stuff for this. If if you're in open land and you don't really care and you want to ruin the environment worse than your car already does you can just you can just wash this down with water you don't you don't need anything special because this old all this junk believe it or not it's not like grease or oil it'll wash off with water because it's just brake fluid um hy hydroscopic means it, it it pretty much just takes in water um, it's made to do that. It's made to absorb moisture, brake fluid. So water usually works fine. Um, I'm not going to use anything. I'm just going to wipe this down a little bit with some crappy old rags and call it good enough because I'm me and that's what I do. I'm sure if I worked at a place that holds it down with crap loads of brake cleaner but I don't I don't like making that kind of mess in my garage and that kind of mess to deal with so that's what I'm gonna do right there that's good enough for me the brake room I didn't use any cleaners on it or anything I just um, took it inside in my in my wash tub actually and I just I just washed it all down with water let it dry it's a little rusty I'm gonna clean that up I got a vice grip here for the for the brake line. You want to pinch this off. You want to get it too tight. I can kind of feel where it where it crushes. And then I just turn it down a little bit. Usually that's good. Okay, with this batch of fun, I'm gonna to want to get in here with a 13 millimeter. This line's so rusted. Hopefully nothing really bad happens. And uh, it doesn't want to move. It's got that coating on the line and gets rust under it and then it don't want to work. Cure for that, map gas. Yeah, watch yourself too. Brake fluid likes to spit all over the place when you do this. Come on, baby. Not yet. I've seen wheel, wheel cylinders explode from doing this. They just go pow and the end caps fly right out. There, I got it hot enough. Now it's going to work for me. Yeah, try not to breathe. This kind of smoke, I don't I don't think it's going to make you beautiful. I don't, I don't know. I think these little guys might be 8 millimeters right here. There's two of those. I find it's always easiest to take the, the bleeder screw off. And usually what I do is I start the line first. Yeah, I don't want to get it. I don't want to get it tight. I just want to start it real good. I can put these little screws in here. this good and tight you're gonna want to make sure it doesn't leak too after you assemble all this hit the brake pedal really hard and make sure it doesn't drip 
Okay, now you can uh, you can lose the vice grip and just let it go until it starts dripping. I'm gonna put this screw in here and leave it loose. See, one, two, three. Clean those. This goes on like this and like this, right? And this is a common issue. The hole's not big enough. I've had this happen so many times. A lot of a lot of times it's just rust. You just gotta work it in there a little bit. Sometimes get a file and make the hole a little bigger. Or something there. Good enough. You want to get some uh, some brake lube. Them three spots that I ground down, you want to lube those up. And that the pinholes, these holes right here on the back side, you want lubricant on those too. And um, it's a good idea to lubricate the pins because um, if they're really dry, they can make noise, make some crazy little squeaking sounds. My bleeder's finally dripping all over the place, making a big mess. So I'll close that off. No more air coming out of it or anything. I'm going to turn these so they're straight up and down. And then in the kit you got, you got one red and one yellow. You want to make sure you got, in one blue and green, you want to make sure you got the right ones. Match them up with the springs you have. Fish this bunch of stupid through here and there. That's how you take care of that. Then you don't have to buy one of those. There's a little foot on here that's broke too. And uh, I'm gonna use it because uh I'm a hack. Now this is where your safety glasses and your dust mask come in. It's a big lip right here. You can get these turned if you want if you're doing a job like this. I don't because I'm me. Um, you want to get this lip off of here so the drum slides on and off real easy. Otherwise you won't be able to do a good brake adjustment. Yeah, most of it's just rust too, so instead of wasting uh wasting on my sandpaper, I'm gonna beat that stuff off. You know, I'm not saying this is the right way to do stuff. This is just the way I do it. If you wanna get drums turned, go turn them. If you think they're all junk and you want new drums, get new drums, do whatever you want. I don't give a shit. This is how I do it though. Okay, I got this adjuster working really nice. You wanna make sure it's really smooth and it's not sticky at all. Um, I put some anti-seize on the threads. And then um, this side here gets um, dielectric grease or silicone paste, clear stuff. That's that's what the stuff takes, and this tab's busted, but the the short side goes out. And I'll put a little brake lube on these pins. And as far as these go, too, I use a needle nose vice grip to put these in, just because it seemed a little easier than using that funky tool. Oh crap! There's pins on this side. I forgot those. I got to take all this shit apart. Well, I'm just going to try to take this one side off. I'll leave the other side on. The what not to do, how to. How to not to do. How to not to do. Put this junky old piece of crap back in here.
Make sure everything moves, everything does. I'm gonna put this thing on and it's way too loose. I want it to just barely touch off. So I need to adjust this up. Oh, that's too tight. So yeah, I gotta I gotta pull this out of the way because this adjuster will keep it from moving. And then spin it back up. Still just a hair loose. There, no, it's barely touching at all, but I know it's really close, so yeah, that'll be good. All right, do the same thing to the other side and then uh, call it a brake job. Yeah, you want to double check your work when you, when you bolt the tire on. Um, your brake drum, to get a good brake adjustment, it should just barely touch off once in a while if you spin the tire. Should be like that. That's a good brake adjustment. So you don't want it. You don't want it any tighter than that. It's better to have them too loose than too tight. See, it just barely touches in like one one or two spots. Now I'm gonna go test drive this car.